My wife knows me inside and out. She can easily guess where I'll take her for dinner, no matter how hard I try to keep it a surprise. She has this intuition when I need a bit of extra care and affection. She knows my history. Everything from my awkward high school crushes to the frustration I felt after being passed over for a promotion I was sure I'd earned. She's well aware of my irrational fear of snakes and how hearing a child cry tugs at my heart, compelling me to comfort them. She even understands why I'm like that, knowing my father never really showed affection. She's tuned in to every detail of my life, including the fact that I take lunch at 11.30 every day, an old habit from when I was the youngest in the office and had no choice. I used to be back by 12.30, a pattern that stuck with me over the years. But as life has a way of showing us, unexpected things happen. My wife doesn't know I'm taking a late, extended lunch today. The whole office is going out to a farewell party for one of the senior administrators, specifically the director of the research and development branch, where I work. Bill Thornton was retiring after 36 years, and the whole operation was being shut down to wish him a happy retirement. Lyle was one of the youngest engineers working in my division, and I was happy to have him under my supervision. He was a hard worker, imaginative, and highly resourceful. When it came time for merit pay increases and bonuses, I was happy to put in his name. With his first big bonus, Lyle bought one of those mammoth Chevy Suburbans. He had one kid and another on the way, so he wanted a wagon big enough for lots of kids. Apparently, his wife felt the same way. I privately considered his new SUV big enough for a whole clan, much less one family. But he was proud of it and wanted to show it off. With my seniority, I got to ride shotgun on the way down to the convention center. So, Ron, what do you think of my new buggy? Lyle asked. That's me. I'm Ron, also known as Ronald Masters. 29 years old, in pretty good health and well thought of within my field of expertise, mechanical engineering. Though lately my job has had little to do with that degree. I hadn't been a manager for very long, but it was taking up more and more of my time. I was even thinking of taking some night courses in personnel and resource management to keep up with the responsibilities the boss kept pushing my way. It's cool, I replied, interjecting some enthusiasm into my voice. Or is that supposed to be hot or tight these days? I can never remember what the latest slang is, I told him. He laughed. You like it? Oh, heck yeah, I said. I twisted around to peer into the interior of the spacious vehicle. Shoot, Lyle, I remarked. I think the first apartment Sherry and I lived in was smaller than this. He laughed, pleased with my comment. I turned back around to face the front. As Lyle braked to a stop at a red light, I saw once again how high off the road I was sitting. If you're enjoying my content, consider joining my Patreon community. By becoming a patron, You'll get access to full parts of my videos much earlier than everyone else. Plus, you'll be supporting me to create even more awesome content for you. Check out the link in the description to join now. Lyle's truck, as he called it, gave the driver and passengers an excellent view all around and even over most of the cars on the road. I glanced down out the passenger side window when I caught movement out of the corner of my eye. I was surprised to see my wife sitting in her two-year-old Taurus beside us at the light. This wasn't a part of town that Sherry would normally go. It was a long way from her office, and she rarely had to leave during the day. I was looking at the controls on the doors panel, trying to figure out which one lowered the window, but it was taking too long. I started to open the door and tap on my wife's car window when I saw another movement. As I watched, a man's hand was thrust up her skirt so far his wrist, and some of his forearm disappeared. I froze. My gut knotted up so badly and so quickly, I was abruptly deep in pain. I felt the blood drain from my face. My fingers trembled where they rested on the door handle. I felt disoriented. I couldn't think. I couldn't move. All I could do was watch. I waited for Sherry to shove the man's hand away. Surely, this was nothing she would put up with from any man but me. I found it hard to breathe as I watched my wife spread her legs wider, accepting it. The guy she was with, whoever he was, had to have two or three fingers, there simply wasn't any way that length of male arm could disappear under her short skirt. Please no, I whispered, but no one heard. I've only passed out one time, after being struck on the head by a baseball when I was 12 years old. I was feeling the same sensations I'd felt that day right now. My vision began to contract into a narrow tunnel and a huge weight was crushing my chest. 
I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. I'm a strong man, but the shock siphoned all my strength away. I was nothing but an empty shell. If I'd been lying across a set of railroad tracks and had only to roll to the side to avoid being run over by a train, I couldn't have done it. My eyes filled with unshed tears as I watched my wife of four years lean back to better enjoy this unknown man's ministrations. She never objected, never tried to get the man to stop. It came to me that this was a thing she'd enjoyed before with this man, a thing she wanted and was used to receiving. Sherry tilted her head back. Her eyes closed as she lost herself in the pleasure. The look of lust and need for gratification shocked me. It was the same one she showed me when we had S. The light turned green. I saw Sherry slap at the man's forearm playfully. She tugged his hands from beneath her skirt so she could drive, I guess. I twisted around in my seat as Lyle accelerated away from the intersection. I watched my wife's Taurus as it made a right turn down a street that would take her back to where she worked. She'd never looked up to wonder who might be watching in the big suburban. Not that she would have seen me through the dark tinted windows. She knew I wouldn't be out and about at this hour. My lunch hour ended 30 minutes ago. She hadn't cared what an obscene, exhibitionistic show she and the man with her had put on for whoever it might have been. It didn't have to be me watching. It could have been anyone. Sherry had been so caught up with the S-play that she hadn't thought to conceal the act. Yeah, my wife knew me well, but it seemed I only thought I knew her. When she got home that evening, I got a quick peck on the cheek. A couple of years ago, my mind told me, I'd gotten long, loving kisses at the door when I came in from a hard day's work. Somewhere along the line, they decreased in number until they tailed off to nothing. I watched my wife as she started up the stairs. Suddenly, I noticed something missing. It hadn't struck me earlier in the day as I watched her perform in traffic. Sherry, I blurted, what the heck happened to your pantyhose? I know darn well you put on a new pair this morning. How come you're not wearing any now? She hesitated before proceeding down the hallway to our bedroom. She didn't turn around to face me for a long moment. Oh, I got a runner in the right leg, she said finally. It kept on growing and growing and I finally just took them off, she said. She grinned back at me, looking at me more intently than I think she would have under other circumstances. She needed to know if I was buying her explanation. I nodded understandingly. She turned away but not before I detected a small look of relief cross her face. I see, I said in what I hoped sounded was a more playful tone. I hadn't planned to say anything, but a sudden surge of pain and rage had taken control of my tongue and made me ask about the pantyhose. The dual emotions still had control of me. An evil imp pushed me into seeing how far I could provoke my dear wife. I thought some guy might have ripped them off because he was in a hurry to get into your underwear, I said studying her reaction. She was good. There was little to see beyond a slight stiffening in her posture. What in the world brought that on? She said inquisitively. I looked at her with as blank a face as I could manage. I refused to let the hurt and anger show in my eyes. I shrugged. It's been known to happen, I said. You remember Katie, that girl I had to fire last year after she got caught screwing one of the men on the loading dock? Well, I remember her coming back from breaks and lunches without her thigh-high stockings and pantyhose many a time. That was before I knew what was going on, of course. I shrugged and looked away, trying to project an image of a man remembering a painful event. Sherry nibbled at her lower lip for a bit before coming to me. Stepping close to me, she put her palms flat on my lower ribs and swept them up my chest in a slow caress before throwing her arms around my neck. She pulled my head down and pressed her lips against mine. Honey, she said earnestly when she finally broke off the kiss. You are the only man who will ever rip my underwear off. I thought you knew that. There was a hooded expression on her face. Her eyes flicked from side to side as she searched my face for some telltale sign. She was gauging my reaction, hoping I would accept her explanation. I was willing to bet she was wondering how much I knew and what she'd have to do to deflect my suspicions. It broke my heart all over again. She'd been lying by omission all along and now she was lying to my face. It was a raw, calculating thing to do, born of deception and reared by cruelty. I'd hoped well, I didn't know what I hoped for. I guess I thought that if I got a confession from her, we'd find some way to get past this, even if I had no idea how. If you love someone, though, 
It's hard to let go without one last attempt. But Sherry was waiting for an answer. I'd been looking too long into her eyes for something, I just this second gave up all hope of finding. I know that, sweetheart, I said with as much sincerity as I could muster. Katie's husband threw her out and got custody of both kids. She wrecked her marriage, the other guy's marriage, and her life all for a little stupid, dirty s out behind the warehouse. I let my contempt color the last few phrases. Sherry flinched slightly, almost undetectably, but her expression never changed. Well, she deserved it, Sherry said, and now the deceit was complete. My dear wife thought the rules by which other people restrained themselves didn't apply to her. I caught her wrists in my hands and tugged her arms from around my neck. I looked at her levelly, not saying a word, and then kissed her lips gently, taking hold of one of her shoulders in each hand. I turned her around and slapped her beautifully shaped little ass. It didn't belong to me anymore. It no longer mattered that she didn't like even playful spanks. Now go get changed I'll have dinner on the table in 10 minutes, I told her. I turned away and walked into the kitchen without looking back.